Hi, I'm Mike Piatek Jimenez, and today I'm going to be talking about expanding a pool in TrueNAS. Now, in my last video, I sh talked about how I've been spending the last eight months or so uh, working with TrueNAS again after having bad experiences the first time I was using FreeNAS uh, a few years ago. Um, and so far, the second time around has gone a lot smoother. And I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and continue using this uh, as storage for VMware. Uh, this will be hosted all over iSCSI um, to a couple of different VMware uh, boxes. So now that I've made the decision to go all in on it, it was time to actually expand the pool with some extra drives uh, because I wanted to host a couple of additional services here and I needed to actually have that increased storage space uh, for my additional plans. And so, so yeah, it was time to move uh, storage to that device. Now, I recorded this video last week and got it on my computer to edit it and figured out that, only to discover that uh, the audio was, was completely staticky and miserable. Uh, and so I'm re-recording it this week uh, with, and so you'll notice here that there's already four, four disks or four additional disks in this server and that's because I already did this migration um, but I'm hoping this will be the last time that I actually record this video we'll see um, but anyway let's talk about what I did uh, the first time I recorded this video just to give you a background of, of why I'm making this change uh, and, and, and how it's helping my whole workflow here so the disks that I used for the expansion came from this this is a Promise Pegasus 2 M4, uh, and basically it's a Thunderbolt 2 uh, uh, RAID storage device. This supported things like RAID 5, uh, and I liked it because I was able to run uh, four SSDs in it and in a RAID 5 configuration, and so that way if one of the, the SSDs failed, uh, I would be able to continue working without having any downtime and I could, uh, while I replace the disk, it'd be, it would be fine. Uh, and it also gave me increased speed on my desktop. So when hooking it at my desk, uh, it would offer maybe 800 megabytes a second, which at the time was really quick. These days though, you can buy a single NVMe drive and get two to three times that performance. Uh, and so it, it doesn't really uh, make sense, or doesn't, it lost that, that speed advantage uh, as time went on. The other thing that's changed since I purchased that device is that I've since bought a new MacBook Pro and I've increased the storage that I had in, in the new configuration. So I ended up purchasing a new MacBook Pro with four terabytes of internal storage. Uh, and that allows me to, to kind of take this out of the picture because I have enough storage now on the local machine that I don't need an extra desktop box. Now, this also uh, improves my workflow because there's a, it removes a tier of storage from the mix. Um, with that box, I had three tiers of storage. I had the internal storage of, of my computer, my main, uh, my main Mac, I had this storage here as, as additional uh, storage that would be available while I was at my desk. And then I had a third tier here in the form of this NAS um, from Synology. And this is slower storage because it's based on hard drives, but it's a, it's a large storage pool that I can uh, move files that I'm done working on for the time being and I can archive them there. So, uh, that was a nice setup, but the problem is is that with three tiers of storage, there's a lot of shuffling of data around. Uh, you, I move stuff from my internal to the external drive and then move it later to the NAS, and it, it, it takes time and it's harder to manage. Now with this new setup, I'm just going to go to two tiers. I'm going to have a, an expanded capacity inside my laptop and then have the NAS as the second tier I can, that I can move stuff to when I'm done working on, it, on that data actively. But anyway, let's move on to actually uh, doing the migration. So like I said, I already did this before, but here, here's the process that I use to do this. Um, first, obviously, remove the SSDs from this. And the second step is actually to get one of these here. 
Um, this is a label maker that I bought at Staples. I think it was about 30 bucks or something. Um, but with TrueNAS, you want to label all your drives, all the, the drive sleds with the serial numbers of the drive. Um, and the reason for that is that when you have a device like, like the R710 or any of the Dell servers, um, if you have that with a hardware RAID card, then you have status lights on, on each drive uh, showing. If a drive fails, you're going to get a status LED uh, glowing amber to let you know that that drive failed and you need to pull that one to replace it. With TrueNAS, you don't have that benefit. It's going to detect a failed drive, but it's only going to tell you what drive it is or what device it is inside uh, or on the OS. Um, but the problem is, is that the device numbering on the OS doesn't always match the device ordering or the the, the slot number on the, the hardware itself. Uh, and so what you do is you can figure out, okay, I'm gonna look up what the serial number is, and TrueNAS lists that for you, and then you can come see, okay, exactly what disk uh, you need to actually replace, and pull it without shutting down the entire server. Um, as far as labeling is concerned, I mean, all you need is a, a few significant uh, uh, digits of the, uh, of the serial number. You don't need to print the entire serial number. But that makes things a lot easier if you run into problems later on. So, uh, the configuration that this device had uh, that I talked about in the last video is I have two uh, mirrored VDEVs uh, in, in the pool. And I want to add two more uh, mirrored VDEVs to, to that same pool. And all these drives are the same size. And so I started with four 2 terabyte drives uh, in, in the TrueNAS uh, system, and I had four 2 terabyte drives in this one. So everything's going to match up really well. These drives have a ton of write endurance. I think I only went through maybe 10, 15% of the write endurance on, uh, on the desktop drives that I've been using for years now. Um, and so there's plenty of capacity and plenty of endurance left to use it uh, as, as a, a, um, a RAID server. So, and the way that I was going to expand this pool is I was going to do it only two disks at a time. And the reason for that is it just makes it easier to make sure that I'm pairing the, the, same, the same disks or the, the, the right uh, uh, or the correct disks when I add them because I want these top two to be a pair and I want the bottom two to be a pair um, and if you add all four of them you're not sure if you're going to get uh, pairs that aren't right next to each other um, it's not a huge deal but it's something that I just uh, with with knowing my system I want to know that the uh, that each of those pairs is in, in adjacent slots on, on the, the hardware so I'm going to go uh, to my office upstairs and show how the process of actually adding the first pair uh, of, of disks to the server and, and walk through what that process is actually like. Okay, so we inserted our first two drives and then now I'm logged in to the TrueNAS interface. Uh, if you come down here under storage and go to disks, you should see those new disks um, showing up in our case is DA0 and DA3. Um, the other thing I want to do before doing anything else is open up a shell and run zpoollist-v and then your pool name and this will show you how your uh, uh, VDEVs are configured in this pool. Here you can see that I have two mirrors um, and then we're going to check this again after adding uh, the new um, VDEV to make sure that the uh, that we have another mirror added. So anyway, let's go back uh, to storage and go to pools. And here it has a list. This is the 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 pool that I have called SSD mirror. And you go to this uh, cog button up here and say add VDEVs. Now this comes through, and again, we have DA0 and DA3, which are the two new SSDs we just inserted. Uh, so I'm going to select those, add them over uh, to the list here. And you noticed if you only had one of them in there, it would give you a warning saying that you need to have the same type of VDEV when you're adding it to the pool. And so when you're creating 
uh, your pool to begin with, you want to think about that when when expanding um, or when creating your pool and just to think about the configuration that you're doing because you want to make it so it's easy to expand later on. And with mirrors, that's really easy. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add these disks. It's going to say it's a mirror right here. It's going to tell me the estimated raw capacity of this VDEV. Um, and then it also gives me the data capacity available after the extension. Um, that seems low to me, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's the expected free space after the extension because I have about 700 gigs free. Yeah, that would make sense. If I have about 700 gigs free on that pool right now, and if I add another 1.82, then that would get me to about uh, 2.51. Um, and so yeah, everything here looks good. So let's go ahead and add the VDEVs. Uh, added disks are erased, and the pool is extended onto the new disks with the chosen topology. Uh, existing data on the pool is kept intact. Perfect. Confirm. Add VDEVs. It goes through, shows the extension, and it looks fine. It says, all right, use that much, available that much. And let's come back over here uh, in our shell and run a zpool list again and make sure we have three mirrors. And that is true. We have one, two, three. Um, and here you can see that it shows you how much is allocated of the pool and how much. Um, and so this way you get a, a sense for what the balance is uh, of between the VDEVs. Um, and so here you can see, since I just added these VDEVs, it's not going to have uh, any data on it until I start writing uh, data to the, the pool and then it will um, allocate it across all three. So as you can see, it's really not hard to add additional storage to a pool in TrueNAS. After I recorded that video, I basically came down here and inserted the last two disks into the server and then repeated that process. As far as performance is concerned, I was pleasantly surprised I got a little bit of a boost by adding uh, four additional disks. Um, as you, I guess you would expect, uh, when using 4K blocks doing benchmarks, I was seeing around 120,000 IOPS. And then on the 64K uh, read and write, it was getting basically wire speed on the 10 gigabit network. Uh, it was transferring at around 1100 megabytes per second. So that's uh, plenty of speed for, for a, uh, having a couple of servers here hitting it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm happy with the setup. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.